I'm going to show you how you can specifically time your coffee and time your caffeine to get the most powerful effect out of your body, not only from a fat loss standpoint, but from a performance standpoint and even a cognitive standpoint as well. You see, we truly can manipulate the timing a little bit if we know a little bit about how our body's hormones work. You are watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. So make sure that you keep it locked in here for new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. There's also a bell button that you can click that'll help you turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. And additionally, check out highly.com so you can get the apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos at an awesome price. So to understand how we can manipulate coffee a little bit to our advantage, we have to understand a little bit about the hormones that it plays a part with. So the main ones I want to focus on are going to be insulin and then of course the catecholamine known as adrenaline. You see, it all comes down to insulin when we're talking about fat loss, when we're talking about blood sugar in general. And believe it or not, caffeine slash coffee actually has an effect on blood sugar. Now you may have heard that before. You may have heard that having a cup of coffee or having some caffeine is going to cause an increase in blood sugar. And that might have scared you before. But believe it or not, this actually works to our advantage. And I'll explain a lot more in detail in this video. Because later on in this video, I'm going to give you specific times to use coffee so that you can get more out of your workout or so you can get more fat burning, et cetera, et cetera. So just make sure you pay attention. So to lead off this entire video, I want to reference a study that was published in the journal Diabetes Care. This is a pretty straightforward study. It was a randomized crossover study, and it took a look at two groups of participants. Okay, one group consumed a caffeine supplement. The other group consumed a placebo. And what they wanted to measure was their overall insulin sensitivity. What insulin sensitivity is, is simply like the name implies, how sensitive the body is to insulin in terms of when you consume a carb, how much does your insulin respond? Like a diabetic person, for instance, wouldn't respond very much, but someone that's very insulin sensitive would respond to a very powerful degree. Okay, so what they found was that the group that consumed coffee had a decrease in insulin sensitivity by 15%. They became a little bit insulin resistant. Whoa, that sounds bad, right? No, hold your horses for just a second. It's actually a good thing, and I'll get to it in a second. But they also found that there was a five-fold increase in adrenaline, okay, also known as epinephrine. They also saw that there was a big increase in the mobilization of free fatty acids, meaning fat was burned a little bit more. Okay, so now let's talk hormones for a second. So now we know coffee causes an adrenaline spike, a significant adrenaline spike. And what is adrenaline? It's the fight or flight hormone, the fight or flight catecholamine. And when we're talking about any kind of fight or flight situation, the body needs energy really quick. So this explains why we have a little bit of a rise in blood sugar whenever our adrenaline is spiked. Because our body is in a situation where we need to demand energy quickly. So it mobilizes fat, which is exactly what caffeine does, and it releases glucose from our stores, like from our liver and from our glycogen stores in our muscles. And it does this so that we have the ability to burn it fast. But it does this with a really cool caveat. The caveat is it blunts insulin. So we have an increase in blood sugar without the subsequent increase in insulin, which means the body is forced to burn that glucose, which is one of the reasons why you get physical energy when you consume caffeine. That rise in blood sugar, in a way, sort of inherently encourages you to get moving so you can burn it. So here's how it sort of looks in sort of a sequence. You consume a cup of coffee, okay? It raises your adrenaline levels five times, okay? Then it decreases your insulin sensitivity and it decreases your insulin levels overall which therefore triggers the release of another hormone known as glucagon. Glucagon turns on fat burning and free fatty acid mobilization, but it also triggers glucose to release. So that's exactly the sequence and how it occurs. So to piggyback off of this, we look at some of these other studies. And these other studies have found that caffeine consumption triggers a temporary insulin resistance response. Now again, this probably scares you, right? But you know what you're doing. So if you apply this right, you can really get some powerful advantages. Insulin resistance is most commonly known through diabetic patients. Insulin resistance is where someone consumes carbs, but they don't produce insulin. So their blood glucose remains elevated, they have high blood sugar, right? Okay, well why on earth would insulin resistance ever be a good thing? Well, having a little bit of insulin resistance if it can be controlled and it's only temporary, can make it so that you can get away with a little bit more sort of lackadaisical aspects of your diet. 
So what I mean by that is if you are insulin sensitive, meaning you are the opposite of insulin resistant, so after a fast or when you're on a low carb diet or after you just had strenuous exercise, you're very insulin sensitive, which is great if you know that you're 100% dialed in with your diet. You see, insulin sensitivity means that you are in a position to consume something and it's gonna get absorbed really quick, which can be great if you're spot on with your diet. But what if you slip up a little bit? Well, then all that's getting absorbed too. You see, the way that I like to reference it is with great power comes great responsibility. So when you're super insulin sensitive, you have a lot of power. You have the power to absorb a lot of really cool nutrients, but you also have the power to really screw it up. And quite honestly, we're not totally dialed into what's happening in our bodies. So we're pretty apt to screw it up, quite frankly. At least most of us are. The other thing we have to remember is high levels of insulin equals less fat loss. So if we're insulin sensitive and we consume something, our insulin levels spike, which again can be good, but it also stops fat loss. So caffeine elicits a temporary, that being the operative word here, temporary increase in insulin resistance, meaning for a short window of time, we have the ability to have a little bit more sort of lackadaisical attitude with our diet. So basically, caffeine isn't stopping insulin, so it's not actually having an effect with the production of it. You're not gonna make yourself diabetic with it, but it prevents it from binding to the receptor. If it can't bind to the receptor, insulin cannot allow those nutrients into the cell other than to just be burned for energy really quick. So with all this, it leads us to, well, when should you be consuming your coffee? When should you be consuming caffeine? Okay, the main times you wanna consume are when your insulin levels are at their lowest, okay? So if your insulin levels are already low and you consume caffeine, it's gonna instigate more of a fat burning response. So this means when you're fasted, like first thing in the morning, or when you're during a workout or anything like that. Another good time to obviously consume caffeine is pre-workout. That's an obvious one, and it's simply because you're mobilizing fat and that is allowing you to burn that fat during a workout. But again, since insulin allows glucose to release into the bloodstream, you're gonna burn that glucose immediately because you're working out. So you're not gonna have any negative effect there. Now, caffeine post-workout, I actually talked about this in another video, so I'll just paraphrase it here. Caffeine post-workout actually encourages the uptake of glycogen. What that means for you is that if you have a little bit of caffeine post-workout, it allows the carbs that you consume post-workout to go into the muscle at a rate that is 66% higher than without caffeine. So small amounts of caffeine post-workout are very powerful. Here's the really important one, and I guess the end-all be-all of this video, so make sure you're paying attention here. Remember that caffeine allows a spike in blood glucose to occur. So if you consume caffeine with carbs, you're in for a world of hurt, and this is where the problems occur. This is where the crashes occur. Envision this for one second. You just had a bunch of carbs. You just had a bunch of hash browns, okay? So your glucose is already elevated. Your blood glucose is already elevated, okay? Then you had some coffee. And that coffee overrides everything and triggers adrenaline. And that adrenaline says, oh my gosh, we need to release more glucose. So it released more glucose. So you just took your blood sugar from already being high, from having carbs, to being even higher. But you've got some jet fuel behind that because you've got adrenaline causing your body to burn it fast. So what just happened is you just caused a huge spike in blood glucose because you had caffeine with your carbs. Then all of a sudden what happens when that blood glucose drops? Boom, you crash. We may have just helped identify why you feel so good when you have things like bulletproof coffee because usually you're not having them with carbs, right? Usually you're having some fats and you're having your caffeine and maybe a little bit of protein. And you're like, I felt like I never crashed. Well, we're now finding through research that the culprit of the crash could be the combination of caffeine and carbs. Now, again, take it with a grain of salt, but if you have caffeine in the absence of carbs, you're gonna have a more powerful effect at fat burning and less likelihood of a crash, which means higher cognitive function. So I know this was a long, in-depth explanation of a relatively simple topic, but a lot of people have been wondering when the best times to consume caffeine are. So in short, right when you wake up, pre-workout, immediately post-workout, and never with carbs, okay? So again, as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. Ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.